hello everyone so welcome back to the channel today what we will try to do is we will try to um, develop a numerical simulation model for 2d uh, forging process it will be a dynamic process i've tried to create a geometry here with some mechanical properties and and um, to give you a background of what we will uh, develop so we will have a deformable part which is shown here with a rectangle it will be 2d so not 3d and then we will have two dies one the bottom die which will be fixed and then the top die which will have an indent in in the middle and then it will be uh, moving so this die will move downwards and it will uh, deform this part so i have also written some geometric attributes to keep us fixed on what we want to model so this the length of these two dies will be 100 millimeters with uh, a small indent in it we will see how how large we can develop it the part that will be in the the part which we will want to um, forge will be 60 millimeters wide 50 millimeters high and then we will just define 25 millimeters stress strength thickness to it so virtual thickness to this part um, uh, and basically it will be 2d and um, um, yeah so then the second part is that we want to define uh, some mechanical properties for this uh, block we will define um, it to be a soft material with the young's modulus of 200 gigapascals poison's ratio of 0 0.3 and um, we will also define plastic properties um, of uh, 200 megapascals uh, of uh, starting uh, uh, plastic deformation so basically 200 megapascals at yield point and then 500 megapascals for 0 0.9 strain um, we will just define these two points so it will be a straight line later you can modify it based on a realistic material so yeah that that's the idea we will keep referring back to this um, uh, graphic or image or sketch again and again just to make sure that we are uh, going according to the plan um, so let's begin i will um start my abacus and um, yeah, let, let, let it turn on yeah so here we are when you will turn on your abacus you will um, see this screen so what you can do is you can click on a standard explicit model um, so yeah we are in the standard explicit model now what i want to do is first of all as we always say we i want to set a working directory normally it is c temp but i will choose it as an, i created a new folder forge 2d and i will use this as a working directory um, and then i will press ok and i will start my model but before that i want to um, save my model so i will um, name it forge 2d it is already created file it will ask me if i want to overwrite it i will say yes i want to overwrite it and then i will uh, rename my model as well i am doing it just so that we can trace back and we uh, we always know uh, what we are working on now oh, what happened uh, delete yes okay so we have this model right um, so as you know we want to develop two dies and a block um, so first I will start with uh, a smallest die so I will double click on the part it will ask me what kind of part do I want to model I want to model lower die okay so it is a 2d planar um, analytical rigid wire I cannot choose any other options and because it is just 100 millimeters uh, wide I will choose here to just in case yeah so the so then I can just make a flat line that is what I want so I am pressing the middle mouse button to continue with the commands you can also follow this in these instructions given below the sketch of the 2d planar anticle rigid part is complete and what i want to do now is i want to give it um, um, uh, dimensions so it is 100 e minus 3 because it is 100 millimeters so yeah it is this die and then for example once i am done with this i can press the center mouse button or i can press this cross and then once i am done with this sketch i will press done and i have this part here um 
what we also want to do is we want to define reference points for uh, for both dies so let's let's do that so i will go here on tools reference points and i will click on this point to give it a reference point it will come in handy later when we will want to define boundary conditions and we will want to define rigid surfaces and so on and so on so everything will we will define on reference point rather than defining on the whole surface but yeah you get the idea so we have the lower die and now we want to um, similarly um, make the upper die right um, so I will click on double click on the parts and I will click on I will rename it upper die 2d planar analytical rigid approximate size is 2 and then I will just again make this line press center mouse button when it's done what I want to do is I want to uh, add a circle to the middle so so it automatically snaps to the middle of the line so I don't have to worry about that so I will just add this circle here okay and then I will uh, so so I don't know the dimensions of the circle I just created one to quickly have a die and then I will just choose this or oh no wait 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 first we want to give this dimension which is 100 e minus 3 so this is small and then we want to give dimensions to the circle as well which is 40 e minus 3 oh what, what happened so yeah so here is the dimension dialog 40 e minus 3 apply 100 e minus 3 okay it is smaller i want to make it even smaller so, okay like this and is this 100 e minus 3 so 100 e minus 3 by okay so this is 100 e minus 3 and this is um 10 millimeters right and this is the radius ah okay i understand so it is the radius that is why it was so big before um then what i want to do is i want to use this um auto trim command to um to remove all the uh, features that i do not need and i will just keep this feature right here okay and i'm then i'm pressing the center mouse button again and then i'm just pressing done it contain only lines, circular arcs of less than 180 degrees and parabolas. The sketch contains an arc greater than 180 degree. Oh, what should I do with it? It should not be the error. But what we can do is we can try to have a fillet here that might resolve the issue. Uh, zero zero five and this here yeah okay so we were able to get it so then we have um, this surface and I will also define uh, a reference point on this point okay so now we have two dies and now we want to model our part which we will um, deform in this forging process um, to do that I have my I will call it a block and it is 2d planar it is deformable uh, shell and approximate size is again 2 and I will, I will make this block and now if I refer back to this geometry you will see that the block is 60 millimeters wide and 50 millimeters high and that is what we want to do here so we want to have it uh, 60 millimeters wide and 50 millimeters high okay so we have our block here um, I am scrolling in and out using my center mouse uh, button to um, zoom in and zoom out of the geometry and then I will just press it again and again to have this block wonderful now what we want to do is 
we want to go in the material section and define the material as you already know i will call it steel uh, i will define uh, so because we will be um, doing um, uh, explicit simulation here it is a time dependent uh, simulation the forging process therefore we also need to define density so I will define density as uh, 7800 kilogram per meter cube in SI units um, elasticity I want to define um, 200 uh, GPA and poisons ratio to be 0.3 and then I want to define my plasticity as simple isotropic homogeneous um, plasticity with a yield stress of um, uh, yeah that that's what we discussed in this um, diagram that this yield point will be 200 megapascals for zero strain and then 500 megapascals for 0 0.9 so 200 megapascals 200 megapascals for zero strain and then um, 500 megapascals for 0.9 strain okay so th these are the mechanical properties that we have defined in very simple quick terms of course you can change it for your realistic material later and then we want to define a section we are defining it as steel again it will be homogeneous solid continuous and steel plane stress and thickness is 25 e minus 3 this is something that we discussed here so we want to give it a a virtual thickness to the block and we are defining it as 23 and then i want to assign the section to our part i can do it from here assign section I can also go here and in the block section I can uh, section assignment I can click here and do it I will just quickly do it from here so I will click this it will ask me select the regions I don't want to create these regions as a new set therefore I uncheck this box I will click done steal from section yeah it is from section okay and then it is assigned the color changed Okay, so our uh, modeling is done and now we will go towards assembly and now we want to assemble everything together um, in uh, um, in a position from where our initial simulation will start. No? So in the assembly mode, uh, we have already discussed, we want to import all the parts. Now there are three, so I will first import the lower die. I will keep my mesh on the part not on instance so if it is on instance then you mesh it in assembly if it is on part then you mesh it in part section so there are slight differences here but we will keep it on the part um, so i will import my lower die and then i want to offset from other instances so keep so to bring all the instances away from each other now so lower die i will press apply and then other upper die i will press apply and then the block i will press apply uh, a part must be selected uh, yeah I just press applied for all three now I can cancel so I have all these parts here I also have this reference coordinate system coming here for assembly I don't need it because it will uh, it, it it conflicts with my global coordinate system and therefore I just removed it from features now I want to assemble them together so what I will do is I will go to instance translate and I want to translate this instance I will press done and I want to move this point to this point so this instance is translated I will press ok and now this instance is placed here and similarly I want to move this instance where the middle of this die will be in the middle of the block and what I will do here is I will um, again instance translate I will select this instance uh, done and then I will I want to move this point to this point and then I will press OK done so now my assembly is complete and this is what we discussed here this is what you see here so my my lower die is here then my block comes on top and then there is this upper die which is on top of it right so we 
so as we are defining these uh, dies as analytical um, um, rigid surfaces we do not have to define the rest of the die like in physical process we can just define the surface and it will uh, it will be um, treated as a uh, 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 a full rigid die which is which is which does not deform at all so therefore we do not the geometry is relatively simple no? okay so once once our assembly is done then we will go in the steps part and i will double click on the steps part because i want to create a new step and in this window i want to instead of creating a static general step i want to create a dynamic explicit step okay and i will name it um yeah um forge i will call this step forge so once i will continue it will ask me for all the information so i want to give it the time period of one i can give more time but i want to give it a time period of one nonlinear geometry is i can i i can keep it on i can turn it off it does not have a very significant effect now but when our material is more or less dynamically plastic um, then this this plays a huge role um, okay let, let's keep it on it it improves the accuracy uh, with the incrementation um, this is where I want to play I want to make keep it automatic maximum time increment is um, I do not want to increase the time increment more than 0 0.01 so at least 0 0.02 so at least I will have 20 30 frames um, in my case and time scaling factor is one in mass scaling I have to um, you define mass scaling because it is a forging process there might be some elements will be extremely distorted and we want to um, quickly solve them rather than um, waiting for their solutions to converge um, you can read about you can read more about mass scaling and how it affects the simulation accuracy as well as simulation speed um, yeah, there, there is a trade-off but I will just create one um, semi-automatic scale factor by 1 e minus 5 I will just write this here I, I think it, it it will work and I am not playing anything uh, I'm not doing anything with others and I will just click OK so this these are our solver settings they are they're important and then based on them as you as we already saw we are defining which outputs do we want from the model I will just set, keep my default settings and which outputs which um, history outputs do we want from our model I will just keep them as a default and um, we can move on now we want to define these interactions so how these contacting surfaces interact with each other it is important to define them because that is how the simulation will um, uh, yeah, calculate how the surfaces are interacting and how the stress or strains are transferred from one surface to another and therefore for that first we need to define interaction properties so i will define a certain friction coefficient between the contacting surfaces um, and for that this is just um, in in the first part so the other two are are better to model for for contacting surfaces because they help in the accuracy of the simulation again you can read more about them we are not talking about the uh, the contact properties and everything but in tangential behavior we talk about how these um, surfaces will interact and here the friction formulation you will see it is frictionless i will change it to penalty and i will define my friction coefficient which generally is mu regarded as mu i will define it at 0 0.4 or 0 0.5 let's say in, in in very high temperature forging processes it is around this value so why not take it okay so I am defining my interaction property and then I will def start defining interaction so I have to define you can understand that I have to define interaction between the block and the and the lower die and the block and the upper die so I want to define how these surfaces are interacting with the upper die and how these surfaces are interacting with the lower die so I will start by uh, defining them in the initial step so I can choose from here in which step they are starting um, it, it, it doesn't matter when, between the initial step and the first step that how these interaction is changing but that is why I, I'm just starting from the initial one and we define lower 
die and block so i will name this interaction as lower die and block surface to surface contact continue and now it is asking me select the first surface right so i will select this and then it will ask me because it is an analytical surface which side do i want to apply property on so i will select magenta and then it is asking me choose this uh, second surface type so i will select surface and then i will choose these three and i will press control to or shift to i don't know how to how to not select that control or shift should have worked no it is not working like this okay so what i will do is um i will go in um view assembly display options and the assembly display options part i will go on instances and i do not want to see the lower die okay so this lower die is um, is is not visible it is there but i cannot just see it in here now so then i will easily select these three surfaces and i will press done and then it will ask me um yeah so all these attributes it is already filling in the contact interaction property contact controls are by default and i will press okay right and now i can see the lower die so you will see that there these contact attributes are defined on both parts then i want to do the same for the um i wa again want to define this um interaction between the upper die and our part so i will double click on this again in the initial part i will see upper die block i will name it and surface to surface continue i will select the rigid surface first done uh, yellow and i will just remove the upper die to make this selection easier i will click on surface to and done and then i will press okay so apply okay so now we have both surfaces and they, they are their interaction is defined with each other um the other thing that i want to define is i want to define that these um uh, dies are rigid which means they will not deform during the process and for that i go in constraints rigid body and i define i name them rigid body continue analytical surface i it is analytical surface done um which side is rigid magenta and reference point across which it is rigid is this one so here you will see that the reference point comes into play now Acro along this reference point everything is rigid so whatever properties or definitions i will define on this reference point will be applied on this whole body and similarly i can define for upper die rigid body continue and um, i will just select the surfaces and i will press done and it will ask me which side i will click yellow and then reference point is this one and okay so now reference point is fixed and um yeah so everything across the surface point is now rigid great now because it is a dynamic process so we have to define an amplitude we cannot go without amplitude so my amplitude is as we discussed here that we want this die to move 25 mm uh, downward from where it is right now to forge this part right so what i want to do is i want to define an amplitude which is um, um, a slope or how it is called it is um ramp i will just call it uh not ramp ramp is something that abacus already knows so it will be a confusion i will call it linear okay and in tabular form so the in amplitude we want to define that for time 0 amplitude is 0 for time 1 amplitude is 1 right so that this time part comes from 
this step initial because our time period was one therefore i am defining this amplitude uh, from zero to one if this time is something else then i need to define this amplitude as to up to that point so the, so yeah so basically this means that um, when my um, amplitude is when my time is zero the amplitude the displacement is also zero and when my time is one maximum this displacement will be maximum um, let's apply this first in the load case so i want to apply load in the forge step and i will say displacement but it is not that easy let, let's not do it like this so what I want to do is I want to right click and I want to manage and here I want to um, create a new load or displacement ah okay so I do not need to define load I only need to define boundary conditions because here I can define the boundary condition as displacement so I will click on manage create um and let's talk about the lower die first so for all the display i will not select the symmetric asymmetric and caster i will just select ro displacement rotation huh? and then i will click on this reference point and then i will select that all the displacement and rotations of of this die are fixed okay and they are propagated in the second step you can see that so in the when the simulation will begin they will be fixed and when the simulation will actually start to run they will again be fixed but when i want to create the same boundary conditions for the upper die what i will do is i will select displacement rotation click on continue select this reference point and here initially i want them to be fixed right but then later when the simulation runs i want my u2 the displacement in x direction to be something and which is um, minus 25 e minus 3 right and the amplitude is linear so my amplitude has also changed okay and when i will press okay so it will say here it was created here but it is modified in this step and this is how and you will also see an arrow uh, here in the downward direction which says that the boundary condition is applied in this direction the displacement is applied in this direction okay so so this is what we wanted to apply now the um, the only thing which is remaining in our model is meshing so i will go in the module mesh and here we said in the beginning that we want to define mesh on our part therefore i will have to choose a part instead of assembly here i will be able to see my mesh options because i want to define a regular grid so mesh controls i want to define quad structured mesh now it will turn green what we want to do is we want to define an approximate global size of let's see this it is too big and this is relatively smaller oh you can um you can modify this approximate global size to set your requirements because if it is the mesh is bigger then the simulation will run faster um, not uh, even on not so good computers if the simul uh, if the mesh is very very fine then it will take a lot of time also it is a dynamic simulation so naturally it will take more time but you can control it now just to have an idea and also some softwares might have limitations that you cannot define more uh, more than a certain amount of uh, elements or mesh and therefore then you can um, control this and then i will just press ok and from here then i will choose the uh, the element type and it is explicit linear plane stress ok um, and then i want to mesh my part it will ask me do you want to mesh your part i will say yes so now my part is meshed okay so this was the last step that we wanted to do and now we can um, create our job i will double click on the job i will rename it forge 2d 
and I will continue it in parallelization I will use two CPUs so that it runs a little bit faster I will press OK and now let's see if it runs or if it gives errors we, we, will, we will see because I already have this file as a job file with the same name so it is asking me if I want to rewrite it yes I want to rewrite it and it will be submitted and I can look at the monitor on how it proceeds okay okay so it is giving an error in the mass scaling so it is it says that the real value for parameter must be between 1 to 1 e 36 okay I think I made a mistake it should be 1 e 5 not 1 e minus 5 I think we will see I will submit it again and now let's see what is happening so it is asking me for permissions I will give it permissions so it is yeah running kinetic energy is changing okay that that's good so it says that it already completed in this many steps I will dismiss it and look at the results and we will see how it went okay okay so we see that the die moved 25 millimeters below and it created this forging and we can see all this um, now if I want to analyze this what I have to do is I will go in the results step frame here I can see all the frames that were recorded for this simulation initially I will go here and then I can click on any frame to see what was happening at that point but what I can also do is I can use this navigation so I can click on next 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 and we can see how this part is deforming right so yeah uh, and this is basically all the colors that we are seeing here are uh, the Mises stress we can also see uh, um, a true strain or uh, plastic strain uh, or equivalent plastic strain uh, through the simulation how that is changing and then I can run this animation to see how that plastic deformation is taking place okay and we see how plastic deformation is happening in the part so this kind of forging process with our, in an indent in the middle will be very hard to calculate or compute using hand but with simulations you can see that it is um, quite easy and intuitive and, and, and it makes more sense I am not talking about the accuracy of the results here um, that what what is the value and where of course you will see plastic more plastic deformation here than in the rest of the block because we did not care too much about the solver which we were using we did not care too much about the material properties that we were defining and therefore that might they might be misleading so the more accurate your input is the more accurate your output is but you get the idea and we can see how the stress is in um, X uh, direction and y direction and in uh, z direction are uh, defined um, in, in the model and how they evolve during the simulation process so I can also go to the last frame and see that uh, stresses in the uh, y direction are mostly negative with most negative stresses at this point which are almost 542 megapascals and least at this point which are negative 211 megapascals right? so this is how you read the results on what is happening here we will do a lot in the post processing session but yeah you get the idea and this is our simulation you can run it you can ask questions you can comment i can make follow-up videos on how if if you miss some step or if you were not able to follow something so yeah Happy simulating and um, we will see us in the next session. Bye.